Chris the Goat, he has a podcast, yeah. Chris the Goat, it's called the Goat Man Show. He's a Capricorn hippie, banjo loving hillbilly. He lives in Missouri. It's the Goat Man Show, yeah. You are listening to the Goat Man Show with Chris the Goat, <laughs> a podcast about nothing in particular. Goat Man coming on air in three, two, one. What's going on, guys? This is Chris the Goat. You are listening to The Goatman Show. Today, I think we're going to talk about something a little different than what we have already, uh, just something to kind of get people thinking. Let's go on about the First Amendment. So how many people out there actually know exactly what the First Amendment means or what it's supposed to mean? A lot of people anymore don't, unfortunately. So we're going to go over that real quick and kind of start tearing it apart on what it means and what it represents for us. So the First Amendment reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people, peacefully to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So basically what it's trying to say is Congress cannot make a law that restricts an establishment of religion, uh, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Okay, so let's take on that first. So Congress cannot limit what religion you practice or the freedom to practice whatever religion you believe in the United States. So let's move on to the next. Or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peacefully assemble. So they cannot make a law stopping you from believing what you want to believe or openly or freely supporting what you believe in. Okay, and then the next one it says is they cannot create anything that will limit the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So the government under the current First Amendment cannot restrict the rights of the people to say what they want to say, uh, voice their opinions, voice their concerns, um, pray the way they want to pray, practice the way they want to practice, um, and post what they want to post. We're in a posty posty world. A lot of the woke people want to go and, and limit, you know, the, the, the speech of people. Let's, let's get into that because that's something that I personally have had a, uh, a good, uh, personal experience with. So with the First Amendment, what I think a lot of people don't want to acknowledge is the fact that it works for everybody. It works for me. It works for you. It works for who you call Nazis. It works for who you call communists. It works for who you call whatever. Everybody has the right to say what they want to say. And whether or not you agree, we have the right to disagree with you. You're not always right. And you're never going to be right all the time. So you're always going to have people that have opposition. I'm going to have people that agree with what I say. I'm also going to have people that don't agree with what I say. It doesn't mean we have to hate each other. It doesn't mean we have to silence one another. All it means is you have to understand you're not always right. And just because you feel one way or just because your emotions lean one way doesn't mean that you're right. Because we currently work on a system of law and order and the law is the First Amendment protects me to be able to say what I want to say to you. It doesn't mean you have to listen. It doesn't mean you have to care. It doesn't mean you have to absorb the information that comes. What it does mean is you have to accept the fact you can't shut me down and silence me. That hurts people a lot. They don't understand why they can't just be able to get what they want or say what they want. Or if something offends them, why it can't just automatically disappear all the time. You know, I think a lot of people are still confused on what the First Amendment is and how exactly it is applied. So I was... Um, just bored scrolling and I'm, I'm hoping it's a joke but i'm on change.org right now and there is a petition to abolish the first amendment and i'm going to read it to you it says i think that the first amendment is stupid so we should get rid of it and then of course we get into the uh the definition of it the first amendment says congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech, or the press, or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. This means that people can have rights 
and are subject to freedom. That's dumb. No, thank you. Sign this petition for a dictatorship. Now, again, you know, I like to hope that this is a joke. Um, but it's really hard to tell anymore in our days. Okay, well, the first comment's Joseph Stalin. And then the second one was Barack Obama. Now, granted, you know, even though some people may think that it is a joke and they want to, uh, you know, poke fun at it, there's a lot of people that are going to see this as being a positive thing, especially when we get into the woke generation of woke capitalism in America. I mean, I'm 27 years old. I hate a majority of my generation who doesn't have common sense. I, I, I don't associate with a lot of people. Uh, in my generational gap because they are involved in this crazy, stupid shit, and I don't agree with it, and I'm not going to pay, you know, the slightest bit of mind to it. I'm not going to play or pretend. I'm not playing pretendies so I can go and make other people happy. Fuck that. So I'm not one to want to restrict the rights of anybody anyway, you know. Um, is the Constitution perfect? No. The Constitution did have a lot of racist things in it. Uh, it had the three-fifths, um, uh, I'm not even sure what the word would be for it, but basically saying where slaves were three-fifths of a person, so anything that they did didn't count as a full citizen, it was less than. You know, that's one example of how the Constitution does have embedded racism. Uh, you know, and we did have a civil war to try to solve that, and I think that as time goes on, we will continue to have issues and things that pop up uh, to better ourselves and better our country. Um, up until that point, I think that our biggest thing that we can do is educate. Education is key, and to continue on with letting people know about the past and the history and the things that did happen is the only way that we can ensure moving forward that we're not going to repeat the same thing. Um, a perfect example of that, and one thing I touched on episode one, is cancel culture. Um, if people get so offended by Civil War statues and they get so offended by World War II statues... They get so offended by all these different representations of history that their first idea is to cancel it. Let's shut it down, tear it down, throw it in a river, burn it, melt it, forget it ever happened. Okay? That's, first off, not going to change your life whatsoever. You're not going to have a better life because a statue's gone. You're not going to be seen differently because a statue's gone. You're not going to have an easier way of passing through that city or that town or state with that statue gone. That's just the hard reality to it. It's a it's a sensational movement to cancel things because it you feel it's actual progress, but you're not doing any actual progress. You're tearing down a statue. You're erasing a piece of history from current time. What you're not doing is changing the hate that was behind the actions taken, the education to prevent it from happening in the future, or the redressing of it to your children so they understand what racism is or what anti-Semitism is. If they don't continue to evolve with it, and then if they do see it, which we're currently, like I said, looks like the uh, woke crowd is Nazi brown shirts calling everybody else Nazi brown shirts, which is a classic case of, I know you are, but what am I? We, we're going to suffer repeats in history once our generation is gone to where we can't continue to educate them on the atrocities that we know happen. So what are we going to do when we when we live in a in a Marxist or a socialist or a communist society when it could have been avoided, but we chose to accept everybody and believe all political views and believe all of this and this and 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 grow so hyper tolerant that instead of people putting their foot down for what's best of a society, we are now accepting every single person's belief or what they feel should be a belief and if we don't we risk being canceled and called out because we for whatever reason are ist of some sort we are sexist or racist or transist or whatever i mean whoever you know people can be offended about anything i can be offended because i'm white and you say something or because i believe in god and you say something or you know because I have tattoos all over my fucking body and you don't like them. You know, I could be offended about anything, but it's ignorant to be offended as much as people are because what good is it going to do? What difference does it make if you're offended? It really doesn't. I mean, all it shows is that you have some issues that you need to resolve with yourself because you're taking things irrationally so. 
like I said, the biggest example of this I have is tearing down World War II statues, uh, tearing down Civil War statues. Okay, if you don't want racist symbols, I, I totally agree with that. I'm not going to say that you have to force any kind of racism down anybody's throat. But I do feel you need to open up museums and you need to share the history still. You can't just wipe away a stain off a of fabric and forget about what happened to it. You're always going to know. We're always going to know the history. We will always know the past. We will always know the atrocities. We will always know why there are so many concentration camp museums and memorials, not only in the United States, but overseas in Europe as well. Germany has pledged to make sure that an atrocity on this scale never happens again in their nation. They have gone so far as to when they have designed the parliament building in their nation, in Germany, it has a glass roof and a staircase all around it. So that way, average citizens can go there. And the way that, that, that it's supposed to mean is the people look down and can always see what is going on in the government. So that way, they are not able to make a sneaky like they did and be able to turn such a, such a movement into a rotten, horrible uh, atrocity in uh, history that's basically changed the way we all think about stuff. Why do all those museums still exist? Why is Germany so open about talking about the Holocaust? That's a good question. The question is answered with a very, very simple understanding that many people won't get. We have to remind ourselves the past because as soon as we eliminate the past, we unsecure our future and anything can happen. And the first way we can stop that is by starting to take away our amendments, being the First Amendment. I don't think people understand that the First and Second Amendment undoubtedly are probably the most important that we have. The First Amendment lets us know what we are guaranteed to be able to do at any given time. And that is, we can be happy, we can say what we want to say, we can support who we want to support, um, we can we can protest things whenever we see something we don't like in the government. We have the right to go and we have the right to protest that. Then we have the Second Amendment. And the Second Amendment gives us the right to bear arms. So the First Amendment lets us know what we can do. The Second Amendment protects the First Amendment and every other amendment therein. So I do definitely agree there's been a lot of good changes in the Constitution. I absolutely do. I don't think that a lot of the racist things that were in there were good for anything, not even at the time they were uh, implemented. But we definitely have to take a, take a step and look and see where we're at today. There's such a massive calling in different areas, different woke movements or different um, sub-political uh, parties where they're saying that the freedom of speech is harmful. The freedom of speech, the First Amendment, gives parents the right to decide what they want to do for their children instead of what the state wants to do for them. Oh, God forbid parents make a choice, you know. They don't like the fact that the government has less control over the people, so they want to cancel what gives the people the right to have a system away from the government. Uh, as Americans, I feel we should want the government included in a lot of our activities, but not all of it. Um, we are not a socialist or communist, communist nation. We've never been designed for it. Um, it's never worked anywhere else in the world. There's atrocities and, and insane human injustices that happened uh, to Joseph Stalin's uh, Soviet Russia, but we don't talk about that. Um, so many people want to say we need to go to these things. We need to go to this government type. We need to go do this. But nobody wants to acknowledge the atrocities that happened before because they're going to say it won't happen or it can't happen again. The problem is it can happen and it will happen. We're already seeing a huge, huge leap towards communism right now in America, or socialism. I mean, it's still too early to tell, depending on if things continue to go down a negative path. Um, let's look at that, though, because right now, how it should be in America is, I'm white, you're black, she's whatever, he's whatever, they're whatever. We can all get along. We can all disagree. Um, doesn't mean we have to hate each other. Doesn't mean that just because I'm white, I'm racist, or because you're black, you're racist, or because that's a cop, he's going to He's going to want to uh, hurt people. You know, there's a lot of things right now that we don't see because the, f the freedom of speech that we have is being manipulated. So all these news agencies have the right to the freedom of press, but the problem is a lot of them tell these lies and a lot of them tell falsities. So that way it can feed a common uh, 
a common narrative so people no longer want to think for themselves, but they just want to be offended because it's possible somebody else is going to be offended. And when we get into that kind of a culture and we get into that kind of a situation, it no longer turns into the pride of, okay, let's have a narrative. I will say something, you say something, let's see what our common ground is and let's go from there. But it's not. People are so afraid of somebody because they have the freedom of speech. People are afraid of me because I'm German and I'm white and I have tattoos all over my body. People want to initially look at me and uh, oh, what, what one term is uh, <laughs> that somebody used recently is I look like I haven't had a haircut in a year and <laughs> it looked like I just got out of jail. That one cracked my shit up. Uh, you know, so there's always going to be people that are afraid of somebody for one reason or the other, right? And with the freedom of speech, whenever I come out and I do things like this podcast, I have the right to say what I want to say. It's going to piss people off. They're going to want to cancel it. The problem is when we get to a physical meaning and we get into the country and we have groups of people, uh, whether they support religion, whether they support politics, whatever it is that they're voicing, um, people disagree with it. So then they stand up and then we get back into cancel culture where the first thing that they want to do is to shut it down, eliminate it and erase it from the history books. But that's not going to do any good, guys. I don't see how that's possibly going to do any good. I feel that instead of us disagreeing with each other, we need to make more opportunities to where there's an open and sa I don't want to say safe because then we're getting into the safe space bullshit and there's no safe space on this planet. Um, we need to have a respected place to where people can come in and give their opinion just like I'm doing. Um, it doesn't mean I'm right. And there's going to be some people that don't agree with me whatsoever. There's also going to be some people who see some of what I you know, say is legitimate. Other people who agree word for word. Uh, but that's the beauty of America. And with this First Amendment Constitution, I'm giving you guys a perfect example of what it means. I have every right to do this. You have every right to be offended, but you have no right to to restrict my rights to speech. And that's where people need to realize cancel culture is getting very dangerous and turning into socialism. Whenever you look at the First Amendment, it does not give us the right to cancel speech of anybody that we don't agree with. It does not give us the right to move forward and to cancel things and to shut them down and to threaten people who speak on things and to try to ruin their lives because they say things you don't want. That's not a constitutional guarantee. The guarantee is that you have the right to say you disagree with me the same as I have a right to say I disagree with you. We have the right to different, to be different. We have the right to differ from one another, but we do not have the right to continue to restrict one another and shut it down because you're not superior to me, and I am not superior to you. We need to get away from supremacy. Um, too many people have this thought of supremacy because they look away or believe away. Keyword, believe away. You, you are not any better than anybody else because of how you look, how you talk, how you speak, how you think, how you feel, how you interpret, or how you carry yourself. Nobody. We're all either pieces of shit together, or we're all the most fantastic fucking things that were ever created together. There's no reason why you should continue to separate people, man. Love is love is love. And if you don't love, you hate. And hate is the problem with the world. If you hate, keep it to your fucking self, because nobody cares. Hate is going to continue to cause issues with this country. Hate is going to continue to break down the fibers that we hold dear in this nation, because we have to have something that we rely on in order for us to be proud of who we are. And that one thing should be constitutionalism. It should be the rights that we have that we have edited and formed to give every single American the right as they're all treated the same together. So these woke crowds who don't agree with what I'm saying, uh, the social justice movements, um, the hard right or hard left feminism, socialism, Nazism, whatever it is um, on either extreme side of the scale, you have the right to say what you want. And I'll, although I may not agree with you, I will probably attempt to listen and try to make an educated guess on what exactly it is that you're trying to say. You owe yourselves the same with me and with everybody else. You're not perfect. Again, your message is not any better. And I'm sure a lot of people will come to find uh, that a lot of what they believe at some point or another is flawed. And that's just the reality that we live in in this country is everybody wants to be right and everybody wants to make a change and they want to do something even if it's not an effective change it feels effective so that's the cancel culture and the woke movement against the first amendment 
is let's take away somebody's right to say what offends me. Let's take away what somebody has said because I don't agree with it. Let's shut down the internet so people can't say anything that disagrees with what I believe. You know, you have the right to feel that way, but you don't have the right to make that happen. I hate to break it to you, but one of the freedoms of being a human is the right for you to talk, the right for you to communicate, the right for you to not have to beg for time so you can get something off of your chest. That's basic humanity, and we owe it to each one of us to at least listen and try to understand what is going on. If your message is full of hatred and full of ignorance and full of bullshit, I, don't be surprised when people call you out on it and don't support what you're saying. But think of it for a split second. If, if you had something you were so passionate about, you spent so long making a mission, you have people behind you, you have donations coming in, everything. Just for somebody like me to come in and be like, you know what, that offends me, so you're going to take it down. You're going to turn it off. You're going to stop believing what you believe and change your entire life because of me, a little fucking snowflake, can't stand criticism or can't stand reality. That's the world we're in. That's what you guys are doing to people like us. So we all need to take a step back and understand we're all in this shit together. We all have the right to say what we need to say, but we need to use our speech for good and articulate it and make people think about stuff and bring out the truth. Stop the satire. Stop the lies. Stop anything that doesn't represent the truth because you're only continuing to be harmful. We have to learn to start trusting one another, to have faith back in our constitution, and to use the rights that we have for good and not for propaganda and not to change people's minds for political power. We have to be citizens before anything else. We're human. We're American. You know, we're homo sapiens. We're all the same bags of meat and blood and and balls and other bits. I mean, we're just here. Why don't we make our lives easier for one another and support one another? Why don't we love other humans instead of continue to try to restrict the rights of other humans because we think they're wrong? Because at the end of the day, we don't know who's right and who's wrong. But we should all strive to be better human beings and try to love one another so we can see the changes in the future that we are preaching for right now. All right, guys, we'll be back here shortly. Chris will be right back. He's, um, having some issues. And we're back. Chris is done headbutting his studio wall to establish his dominance. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. This is Chris DeGoat, and you are listening to The Goat Man Show. So in the first part of the episode, we discussed the First Amendment and kind of got into a little bit about how that's something that's going to uh, always have to be equal. So I think we're going to touch a little bit more on that, and also we're going to get into um, fact versus fear. Um, so when we get into the First Amendment, you know, we've already really touched on a lot, and I think the biggest point that I want to drive home is we have to have an open dialogue. We have a protective document in this country that gives every single American citizen the same right to be able to create their own newspaper if they so choose, to practice whatever religion that they would like if they so choose, um, to speak out against any political movement or government decision or anything that they feel is unfair. We have these rights and they cannot be and should not be taken away. So when we come into an open dialect in the country, I don't feel we have that. I feel like we have left versus right. We have red versus blue, uh, you know, and we really need to find common ground in the middle to where we can admit that some of the left ideas are good. Some of the right ideas are good. And there's a lot of common ground in the middle that us common folks need to have to make our lives sufficiently easy and sufficiently enjoyable. Obviously, if you have um, an ass load of money, you're not as concerned about scraping by and having decent policies to live under as average Joes like myself and all the listeners. Um, but if you do have bukus of money, then you're not so much worried about anything except for probably lining your pockets or growing it bigger. So as an average Joe, we have to look out for ourselves and our neighbors, and we have to understand that the social dialect that we have has to go past color. It has to go past race. It has to go past assumptions. It has to go past neighborhoods. I mean, we as human beings and American citizens 
you know, I personally feel need to be working together as much as possible so that we can create the kind of country that we want. Um, I don't think there's any government or any kind of uh, governing body that cares more about the people than they do itself. And if it's out there, I haven't seen it. So we the people have to take care of we the people. And going through the government processes is a good way to uh, ensure that things we decide sticks. But treating each other like decent humans and not acting like immature toddlers that want to throw a temper tantrum every time they don't get their way, I believe is a good first step into trying to figure out where we need to go as a whole. So let's get into a little bit about what I just said about the toddler throwing a temper tantrum. So there are certain organizations that want to preach a lot of things, and they don't necessarily have facts behind it. They just have a fear-driven motive. So one of the biggest ones that I've uh, kind of discussed a little bit before on the show is being accused of being a, a white supremacist or a boogaloo boy or a clan leader here in Missouri, uh, whichever uh, individual situation we want to discuss about. It goes into the fact that I, as a white guy with multiple tattoos, came out of nowhere, decided to confront the police department locally, and to try to get people involved with no narrative of race. The only narrative that we were preaching was police brutality. So that's when the false accusations started coming, because A, why is there a white man that's trying to uh, overtake a black man's movement, which wasn't even the case. Uh, whenever I had wanted to assemble this, it was not in the name of Black Lives Matter or the name of any organization. It was simply anybody that wanted to get together to come and protest police brutality locally, because I used to run the streets. I've been harassed by the local police department. You know, it's not, it's not something that's just one-sided. Now I can, I can completely understand how on a racial level, you know, you can definitely point out injustices in between different classes and different colors um but that's not something i as a white man i'm not going to say i am the spokesperson for the way that blacks are treated in, in police encounters nor should any other race be the representative for somebody that's not their own who hasn't already lived through something like that because then we start getting into well your voice doesn't matter so let me take it over let me represent because people will listen to me you know, and me personally, I don't think that that's the way to go. I think every person should be responsible for speaking up for themselves. And if you can support a movement, please do. But I don't think it's right for you to to assume or to feel that you have to get involved to make somebody else's life better because people are going to find their own way, especially with the injustices that are going on. So whenever um, the local woke crowd got wind of what I was doing, then the whole the whole wildfire started. We had accusations, we had supposedly signed statements, we had expert opinions. I mean, I have not met near as many experts as these woke people have, and uh, nor have I uh, to this day. And I still don't know who the experts were because they'll never give you that information. Um, no proof has ever been provided. I have asked for pictures, I have asked for a document, I have asked for statements, anything. And, uh, you know, to this day, it doesn't happen because they are operating off of fear. When you fear something, the easiest way to fix it is to shut it down, discredit it. Say it's not something that is going to be good for anybody else. Say it's a lie. Uh, say it's intolerant. Say it's not progressive. Say it's whatever it is. Uh, as soon as you get so many sensitive people in one room and you tell them all, oh, this guy said this and this, he's a Nazi. He doesn't support uh, uh, gay rights. He's xenophobic. He doesn't support uh, adopting children of color. He doesn't support black-owned businesses. He doesn't support equal rights for, for all citizens. I mean, you know, you can come up with a hundred different twists on it. Uh, but the point is, is when people are afraid, instead of them having an open dialect and, and, and talking and, and communicating and trying to sort things out or, or simply just trying to understand one another, they want to make up stories and they would rather defame you and try to run your name in the dirt than actually get to know you and try to work with you to accomplish a common goal, which at that time was uh, protesting against police brutality. And this was the beginning of the uh, George Floyd uh, incident. 
when all this went down. Um, so I can understand where there's a lot of sensitivity, you know, that comes along with uh, white people getting involved with movements like that. I do understand, but I don't feel it's fair at all for any person or group or movement or idea to sit there and say that you have the right to say what you want and present it how you want, but I don't have the right to say what I want and present it how I would like to. Um, you know, and that's pretty much the whole episode right there in a nutshell. We can't continue to spread our ideas and limit others. You can't continue book burnings. You can't continue hiding information. You can't continue falsifying information. We can all work together, but it's going to take transparency, honesty, and the desire to do so. And the problem is anymore is people would rather side with one political side, uh, party affiliation, or the other. And a lot of people don't want to find that common ground. In my opinion, in the, in the reality of things, there's a lot that we can learn from each other in the middle. And all it takes is the desire for us to want to better ourselves, better our country, and better the policies. Um, as I'm making this episode, there's currently a discussion uh, with some of the president-elect incoming office members. And here in the U.S., one of the biggest things that we hold true and dear to ourselves is the Second Amendment. We're going to save that for another video because I already have a few people that are pretty hyped up about it that would like to come on and discuss it live. Um, but needless to say, simply put, I feel that no other amendment is safe without the guarantee of the Second Amendment, which gives us the right to keep and bear arms to defend ourselves against a tyrannical government. Um, so once we get into where we're at today, we start looking and realizing that the country really is moving in a more socialist way. They're wanting to, compens or to uh, confiscate the guns. They're wanting to do mandatory buybacks. They're wanting to ban, quote unquote, assault rifles, assault weapons, which that's still a highly contested debate on if there is anything that's actually considered an assault weapon. Because as far as I'm concerned, if I swing a baseball bat at you, I just assaulted you. That's an assault weapon. You know, we have to be, you know, intelligent when we talk about things and not just try to uh, take away and disarm another society. So the, the prime example to that is we're going to have fear over every single gun owner is irresponsible. Every single gun on the street potentially can commit murder instead of talking about facts. It's not a gun issue that we face in this country. It's a mental health issue that we face in this country. Children are being ignored in school as they come up with warning signs for having troublesome issues or histories of mental disease. Uh, they're not getting the treatment that they deserve, and we cope that with the uh, lack of caring about bullying or, uh, you know, proper guidance and care in the school systems, and everything mixes together, and that comes up with a lot of the gun violence that we see in the country. But nobody wants to discuss the truth. Nobody wants to talk about the fact that we have mental illness as a rampant issue in America. We don't want to talk about the fact that our youth are troubled and a lot of times don't feel like they have anywhere to go. So whenever things get to such a negative point, a lot of times there was many warning signs that were just ignored, but we want to continue to push this narrative on guns. We want to continue to push this narrative that us having the Second Amendment continues to make us a animalistic and beast type uh, society instead of us all being uh, armed and polite, which an armed society is a polite society, is an independent society. And I think anybody can agree with that. The only reason the United States has not been taken over has not been invaded and has not had a homeland attack is because uh, every single American, as far as the world looks at us, is loaded with guns. And as soon as we start taking that away, that's when we have to worry about where the future is headed. So yes, we are moving in a socialist way in this country, I feel, in the aspect that um, the incoming administration would like to see guns taken away. So we start seeing small attacks on the Constitution. Right now we see the woke movement wanting to take away the First Amendment to where if you don't agree with what the message is, if you don't agree with what they're saying, if you have an opinion, you need to take it away. You don't have that right to discuss. You don't have that right to speak up. You don't have that right to be an individual. You don't have that right to have your own opinion. How dare you? You need to take it back. That's exactly where we are, where the First Amendment's good for some and not good for others. And then we look at the Second Amendment. And I'm sure a lot of people who were more left-leaning will have this mindset. And I, I, I genuinely would like somebody to explain it to me because it makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But why would we want our police to have guns if we don't want our citizens to? 
And if you say in the name of safety, I'm going to have to stop you and disagree because that is creating the stepping stones to a totalitarian dictatorship. If you cannot defend yourself. Okay. So let's, let's, let's take world war two. Okay. I really want to take world war two because this is the most uh, common modern example uh, that's popularly talked about and that's Hitler. So when Hitler came to power, one of the biggest things was we need to limit and confiscate and register firearms because of safety reasons. The government's going to take care of you. There's no need for you to have to take care of yourself. So once that happens, then the people no longer have a feasible or realistic way to put the government's movements into check. And the next thing that they know, they're having histories burned. They're having buildings burned. They're having people systematically uh, being accused of being the enemy of the state, they're having the government control the propaganda, the education, the indoctrination of youth. I mean, that's all stuff that we're seeing to an extent here in America right now. And it all starts with losing the rights of the people in the country. Once you start giving up certain rights to the government, they're going to take every single right away from you. And you will no longer have the power, the right, the ability and honestly, probably not the desire to continue to be a free nation against the government because they're going to have so much power. It's going to be almost impossible for you to stop without foreign aid. And the way the world looks at America right now, I can't guarantee that we would have that. So when the government starts taking things away, they can tell you what you can or can't do, how you can or can't vote. They'll start using intimidation tactics against the uh, unpopular party. Um, they will try to lie and manipulate and steal the votes away from the actual way that majority of the people would like the world to go uh, for them. And they want to change it up to where it is a system of sickness, a system of just despair. I mean, I really think that's the direction that we are heading if we continue to give away our constitutional rights. There is a, <clears throat> there is no possible way that us surrendering our First Amendment right is going to be a good thing, to no extent. That means that if you feel you are a hyper-tolerant, super-majestic, self-declared, woke prophet, you have the right to say what you would like to. But what sucks for you is I have the same exact right to say what I want to, even if you don't agree with what I'm trying to say. That's just the way it is. And I, and I love that because we are in a country of open dialogue. We just have to utilize it. Instead of you being so upset when you feel somebody is wrong, why not try to understand why they feel the way they feel? Who knows? You may learn something. You may actually come across somebody that, that can word things in such a way it makes you totally rethink everything that you've already thought. Everything you've been taught, everything that you've believed, everything that that you understood about a particular subject or topic, you're going to come across somebody one day that's going to be either the person that you uh, you didn't care for because of the way they looked or the person that you assumed because of uh, racial biases or or injustice in the past uh, that they are unable to do something. Anybody you can look at in a in a less of a light than you look at yourself, somebody one day is going to come up and they're going to surprise the shit out of you. And I hope when they do that you will learn that you can appreciate people. You have the right to not like who you don't want to like. And likewise, we all have the same right. But what you don't have the right to do is to control other human beings especially when it comes to United States of American citizens. You don't have that right. Um, we don't have the right to shut you down. You don't have the right to shut us down. If we have to listen to your ignorance, you're going to listen to our ignorance. But we need to stop looking at each other as enemies. And we need to come together at the same table, everybody. And we need to look at one another and, and ask ourselves, what is it that we can do to make ourselves happier? What is it that we can do to better our lives? What is it we can do to make this generation actually worth a damn. And I don't think that the current way we're working is, is that at all. Giving up the First Amendment or limiting it or creating a, a uh, biased way that it operates 
or hypocrisy with it, that's not going to cause any good. That's not going to help solve anything whatsoever for anybody. On the flip side of that, us continuing to push false narratives and continuing to accept every single person for every single thing that they do and glorifying it and, and trying to force the entire world to accept what makes you comfortable uh, is not feasible and that has to stop. I think everybody needs to acknowledge that in, in society we have a, a set way of operating. And although, yes, it has and can and will change uh, some here and there, I don't feel that there's a lot of things that need to be forced on anybody. And a lot of that is if you prefer to go by a certain name or title or identification, I don't think it's fair for you to expect every single person you ever come in contact with to understand that and to acknowledge it because the more taboo of an idea that you have and the more taboo of a person you are, you are going to run into a lot of people who don't understand. So you can't, in, in lieu of that, you can't force people to understand and you can't demand laws be changed to make them understand and you can't declare anything. You have the right to be what you want. And I hope that if you decide to go on that kind of path of life, that it makes you happy. I do. Because the world's all about people finding what makes them happy. But I'll be damned if you're going to make me address anybody as anything. Or force me to believe another way of believing that I don't. Or if you're going to demand that I shut up and listen to every word that every other person in this world says. Because I'm a white man. So I have to shut up and I have to submit. You know, there's so much like hypocrisy right now. Just, just everybody's so, oh, you're white, you can't say that. Oh, you're black, you can't say that. Oh, you're brown, you can't say that. I mean, there's, there's, there's so much. There's so much division, and that's not what we need. And the division isn't our fault. The media is doing it, but we are feeding into it, and we are continuing to push the narratives that they have because a lot of people don't want to think for themselves. A lot of people want to turn on the TV and sit there and eat their McDonald's and drink their Coke. And just, just let their brains go to mush as they let the media control what they say and what they, what they see and what they hear and what they think and what they feel. And, and it's, it's to a world now where people are so numb and dumb that the boob tube really is doing exactly what it was invented to do. It is hypnotizing the nation. Nobody cares. People are just being very passive. They're not trying to fight for the right things anymore. They're, they're merely letting things go because there's such a, a, a vicious movement where people, if you disagree with them, they're going to mow you down instead of saying, hey, I appreciate you talking with me, but we have to see, you know, different sides of the same issue. No, it's, oh, you don't agree with what I say. You're xenophobic. You're a Nazi. You know, you're a, you're a hateful piece of shit human being. That's a narrative that's not going to solve anything. If you're trying to demand peace, you can't tell me I'm horrible. Because I don't see the same things you do. You need to try to educate me. We need to have an open dialogue and discussion. And if that doesn't work, then we need to let bygones be bygones. And understand that you're different than me. And we aren't going to be the same person. But that's what makes this world beautiful. Is that we're all so different. Just like every star. Alright guys, stick around. We got one more, one more block of this. And then we're going to be done with today's episode. Stay tuned. Alright folks, we're going to take a quick break to... Digest whatever that was. You're about to listen to Chris DeGoat's podcast. Now I'm just some random girl he hired off Fiverr, and from what I gather, he is f***ing weird. Enjoy! Alright guys, welcome back to The Goat Man Show. This is Chris DeGoat, and we have ourselves a special guest in the studio microphone world tonight. We have Foolish Proxy. He is a Canadian hip-hop artist and a podcaster. Uh, this guy is very interesting. Um, love to get people on that have good vibes. Love to get people on that love positivity and things like that. Um, interesting in the sense he's a hippie like me. Just wants uh, good things to happen around and good people to uh, be surrounding the world and hopefully make those changes. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get him talking with us. And we're going to discuss some uh, different things today opposed to what we have discussed earlier today. Hey, what's going on, man? Hello, hello. Sounds good. How are you doing? 
Oh, I'm doing great, man. It's a good day. Uh, Thanksgiving over here. So just kind of getting in the spirit of being thankful for everything and, and uh, spreading good vibes around. How about yourself? Exactly. That sounds like a, a good way to think of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, having a great day as well. It's nice and sunny here in Canada. So that always just makes that day that much more enjoyable and just uh, having some kombucha. I love uh, trying to be healthy and so trying to start off lunch with some something good. Right, exactly. So um, let's get into a little bit about 2020. Uh, I know it's been kind of a crazy, crazy time. Um, what's something that you can you can kind of recall that stands out that's been a positive thing, uh, opposed to all the you know the doom and gloom that we've been around because of uh, lockdowns or you know the death tolls that's been you know just an insane part of our lives for the better part of a year. Uh, what is something that that is positive that has come out of uh, of everything that that the world's just been focused on that you can recall? Uh, well, if you look at the, the world, how they were looking in the sports world, like the Lakers and the Dodgers both winning championship, that's insane because it was just weird because those teams throughout the years they've always had great success but it just seemed like there was a weird slump going on for the last kind of like five years and it's like is the Dodgers ever going to win a World Series is the Lakers going to be champions again and then it both happened in the most weirdest craziest year but I think like it was really good for America and LA and just the, it was good that sports still kept going on so I feel like that was a positive to help keep people's minds busy. Yeah definitely I know at first whenever uh, all of the reruns were going on from uh ESPN and, and NASCAR and uh, everything else. It was it was a really dull time for a lot of people, and you heard a lot of uprise because you know they wanted to keep watching something for the entertainment because that's something that we rely on is the uh, the positivity and the sportsmanship and the competition, which I think is something that's in rooted in all of us. So it's always good to see that a lot of those different um, sports organizations found a way to keep going and in a lot of ways prospered because they still were able to make a name for themselves even when things were in a trying time. So true, so true. Yeah, Dana White did a really good job of getting the UFC back and uh, just trying to keep people busy and keep people working around that kind of stuff. And uh, it just seems like uh, it was uh, nice to see that they kept fighting for what they uh, for what they believed in. And, and Dana did good. He, he kept a lot of going and he did the Fight Island, which is amazing. Like, it's nice to actually see that happen. Yes, it is. Yeah, you know, it made you wonder how the contact sports especially were going to suffer uh, when it came to MMA or, you know, even something like football, even though it's not technically close contact whenever you think about the uh you know all the protective and and fun stuff but at the same time with everything like wrestling uh the wwe or with the uh you know the fighting of mma or anything similar in between on a smaller scale you you know you really wondered how something like that was going to suffer because of all the restrictions that were going on in general and if they were going to be allowed to continue um you know and with the second spikes it's kind of making you wonder if those things are going to be um, at risk again, but hopefully we can continue to enjoy at least the platform that we're used to now, if not uh, open up and be able to enjoy something more and start being able to attend a lot of those different venues that that in some aspects that people haven't been able to go and enjoy like they have in the past. That's a good point. I was thinking, yeah, with the second spike thing, maybe the NBA won't be able to start in December. Like they wanted to start the next season already. I think halfway through December, and I don't know if that's going to work, but if it does, I know that Toronto Raptors will not be playing in Toronto. They will be playing down in Florida. Right. Um, so what do you think the best, what would your opinion be on the best way, uh, you know, if, if there were a bunch of cases, how do you think that it would be best to pursue uh, moving forward so they would still be able to play and not have to risk, you know, being exposed as much so like right now you know obviously it's just the players that have to be more cautious whenever they uh you know they're about outside of the uh outside of the court doing their daily lives and so on what would be something you know you think would be helpful for them to be able to continue to play even even with the second spike going up well when you think about it it's not exact like what they were doing 
with their with the protocols and like with the NBA bubble, I thought that was actually pretty good. The problem is what the NFL is doing and when they let money come into it. And because certain stadiums in the NFL have let crowds in over 10,000, 12,000, 13,000. That's the problem is if the NFL is doing it, the NBA might want to do it. They might be like, oh, well, we could get in 5,000 in the States. That's the thing I think every league needs to rethink is, okay, you still have the game out there, right? You're still making money off advertisers. You're still making money off sales for jerseys and different things online. You're not making the gate sales, but that's a sacrifice you got to take right now because you don't want to make situations totally worse where everything is shut down and they won't even get the players just to play each other. So we need to rethink the situation with the money and realize that, uh, yes, the gates are important, but it's it's only like one season. Like as like investors and banks and stuff, I feel like they 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 didn't the NFL didn't really need to bring in the crowd. This they they wanted to, but they didn't need to. So th- yeah, that's the main point is just trying to not let the money keep in the way. And and also one thing too was like I know at times people can get lonely, and I know the situations in life that just make like something you life would be going good and you're not thinking about something and then something to stress you out and then you kind of you need that one thing that helps you out so i noticed that like in certain situations um these guys were sneaking girls into the hotel and stuff and there's just certain situations with that it's we you have to like if you want to do these things you have to obey the rules like you can't break the rules not even small rules because it, it's just the whole thing like because it looks bad in the long run if these outbreaks keep going on with sports because then it's just like okay well if that happens to sports and there won't be any more concerts and if there's no more concerts and then all this and then like everything will get shut down and then we'll just do online things for like years and we we don't want that so it's all about just realizing that we're all making sacrifices there's some people on instagram right. there's some people on, that are flaunting on social media and they're breaking rules and they're out with bigger parties like even when jake paul in the middle of summer threw like a mansion party and stuff like okay it might suck to see that because you're like oh i'm left out those people are going to do it but th- don't think about those people think about the other people and think about the older people and stuff like especially like for me i have older parents so for me at certain times I, I'd want to go out more, but in certain situations, it's like, no, nah, I got to take responsibility right now and I got to do what's right. And and for me too, it makes it a little easier because yeah, I can work on podcasts and work on music and I got more stuff to do online. So in an instance, I feel bad for people that necessarily don't have a lot to do online, but maybe this is your opportunity to find new things to do online. Like there's things called Rosetta Stone and that can help you teach you languages and it uses your microphone on your computer. So yeah, like I don't know if there's any um, different websites or different things that you could recommend to people. I mean, you know, just kind of like what you've touched in already. If uh, if you wanted to try to start a podcast even, I think that's something a lot of people could, uh, you know, could get into that cures a lot of anxiety and cures a lot of the stress because you don't have much going on. So that gives you something that gives fulfillment and a potential outlet to do good or to be informative or to use some of your skills that currently aren't being put to use at use. Uh, but yeah, learning a new language is something or something as simple as trying to paint. Um, go and adopt a pet and bond with the pet. Uh, there's all kinds, of, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, there's there's billions of different recommendations. Uh, I did want to touch on one thing real quick before we carried off too far. Um, whenever you got into the not wanting to worry about a profit um, when it comes to, uh, you know, certain aspects and risking the virus, um, I do completely agree with that. One thing that I think that any sports venue or, you know, anything on a large scale could do uh, you know, to compensate for that is we've never really had a special commemorative type year long DVD set that's come out. And I know that sounds kind of insignificant, but at the same time, when you look at it, you know, uh, all the different players are going to be impacted to different levels. Playing like this has got to be something that messes with you mentally because you're used to a huge, overwhelming, powerful environment. And now you don't have those surroundings around you anymore. So it would be interesting to see on their level how those things feel and how that impacts the way that they play. So I think that, you know, if they were to focus less on making an entire profit right now, 
that they would be best to go forward and to get the DVD box set or something like that to put it out at the end of the year. And then they're going to have something that's completely unique and something that's completely something that, that people would be able to spend their money on after, say, taxes came in or something that's never been out there. So that would be something these different things could focus on at a later time if they were worried about making profit back instead of right now in the middle of where, you know, everything's going crazy and we have to worry more about being protective and not worrying so much about, you know, like you're saying, trying to turn a profit on a disaster and pushing things too quick and trying to rush things just in the name of recouping some of the lost money that they're used to having. So true. Uh, since you brought that up, it makes me think of a way that they could make profit um, and keeping people at home still is the future is virtual reality. So put more virtual reality equipment, filming equipment inside these stadiums and make these online subscription packages to people to pay 20 or $40 a, a month and get a really cool view, virtual reality view of the game. And I feel like that could bring in more money and it brings in more of a fan immersive experience. Yeah, it really does. And, you know, that's something that a lot of people are doing on Patreon and Twitch and different streaming platforms also is a lot of people that create, they have a lot of extra, you know, content, a lot of stuff they snip out or they can do a lot of behind the scenes daily uh, filming type things or, you know, exactly like what you're talking about, getting like views in the locker room, maybe your views whenever they're they're planning after a game or before a game or something like that. Um, and then when you pay extra, you have access to special material like that. I mean, that's already a thing for a lot of people. I don't know if anybody, you know, a lot of listeners may not know that for a lot of popular YouTubers or musicians or actors or whatever, they will have things like that. But that could definitely be something that these major companies could adopt on a higher scale because people are paying, you know, thousands and thousands a year for box seat tickets. So why wouldn't they pay something for something more like that, which is even better than having, you know, some luxury at the game. That's something that you can take with you after or not even have to go in cases like now, but still enjoy something beyond what you want to experience like an average. Thing. Yes, I totally agree on that. It makes me think of uh, League of Legends. I don't know if you've ever watched League of Legends. Yes. Have you watched it on Twitch? Um, I have not. Oh, okay. No, not on so Twitch. what they did though is so you can watch League of Legends on Twitch and you can watch it on YouTube. And when you watch League of Legends, it just has that one overview camera angle. But yeah, but right. the thing is, is you can go directly to League of Legends website and they'll show you like... So the matches I'm talking about is the professional esports League of Legends matches they have for the big tournaments. And a lot of people will post these videos on Twitch and YouTube, but it's free to watch that. So they're not making money off that. But they're like, okay, you can come directly to our website and you can watch that same live video that's free right now. But we're going to give you these exclusive camera angles and different things. And when it was like, I think it was only 10 bucks a month or something. And it seemed pretty worth it but then when i tried to do it it was like oh you're in canada i think you could only do it if you're in america or something or a certain location but that that's one thing too is i feel like right. they need to take out geolocations of certain things like hulu why is hulu only in america like why can't i watch hulu yeah i don't understand i don't know if it's uh you know i i want to say it's probably got something to do with a mm. profit um, maybe not being able to tax or not being able to charge uh, membership taxes or fees or something. I mean, everything's all about, you know, a profit anymore. So it has to be almost something like that. But I agree. I think a lot of places need to open up, especially in lieu of the virus, because you're going to get more support from a, a wide variety of people when you try to help them out with everything going on instead of continuing to make their lives difficult and that being a perfect example of it, even though, you know, it may not be something significant to a lot of people, to you, it's definitely something irritating. So why is it something that's still an issue? It is a good question. Exactly, exactly. When you think about 2020, what's one word that comes to your mind? Uh, insane. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's definitely, you know, there's been a lot of highs and there's been a lot of lows, but I don't think that the world has seen anything to the extent as what we have this year. So that's why I would choose insane. What would change. Yours? And the change. reason I say change is I feel like there was a lot of negative things that happened this year and 
but the, there was some positives and the positive things that happened was the thinking that it could change in people's minds of like how important family time was maybe or because like a lot of people maybe are more at home now and then when life starts getting different again and people start getting maybe back into the workforce more or whatever and then time people have family time as much they might miss that more and realize you know what i need to try to not go back into that same pattern i did before and try to make more family for my more time for my family in the future like for me the big thing that changed my mind was money's not that important because it is right. to survive but it's not like if you if you're trying to accomplish like tons and tons of money like when the pandemic hit it was like okay if you don't have really close friends and family money doesn't mean anything to you because even when it was on like a huge lockdown it was like you couldn't really you can't use your money to go on trips you couldn't use your money to go to the bar you couldn't use your money to go to the casino you couldn't use your money to go to concerts you couldn't you go to strippers you couldn't you couldn't do anything you wanted like, exactly. it, it, all these people make this money say oh i could go do anything i want but then now when life became a certain way that yeah it was like close. okay well what's important well it's those friendships with your family and your close friends and if you didn't even have any close friendships well this this would be even a hard time to to work on them so it made you feel like it would be nice to already have a strong friendship and strong relationships when pandemics or stressful things happen in life like this because then it just gives you that extra i don't know i felt a lot better that i had my family that i could talk to during these hard times or i had close friends that i could still play video games with or we could watch movies on discord and stuff and and i feel bad for some people that maybe tried too hard in life to acquire money or try too hard to acquire all these material things and and maybe they sacrifice certain friendships with family and friendships with just friends and stuff so it just makes me feel like maybe that or help people realize that they can learn something from this disaster and, and take a positive thing on it and, and become stronger exactly man no i totally agree um I definitely feel that if you didn't have anybody with you, that it is something uh, that you should work on. And then if it's something in your life where you don't have, you know, the option to work on a relationship where there's nobody to have, you should definitely go and find somebody because it's times like these, especially people who suffer from mental illnesses and things where they need, uh, they definitely need somebody there because it's definitely a lonely time and it's definitely different. And if you don't have the drive to push on, it's definitely something rough. Well, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I definitely hope we get a chance to do it again in the near future. Um, is there anything you want to shout out as a last word for everybody? I don't like to promote stuff, but I just want to shout out that we're, we are uh, – like, it's just hard because in our minds, we just – with the social media, we're all looking and everybody looks kind of happy. And But when it comes down to it, we're all going through something. We're all hurting in different ways. Some people will hide it. But just to let everybody know, you know, certain people might look happier on YouTube and Twitch and you walk around public and everything. But it's just like, it's just part of life. You know, we want to put on a brave face and we want to try to smile and stuff, but it doesn't mean that we're not going through something. Okay. So I just want to tell everybody that you're going through something, I'm going through something, and I'm here for you. Everybody's here for you. At times it might not seem like it, but we all, I know that. I love the world. Anytime I get a chance to go out and meet new people, um, meeting new people, having conversations, laughing. So just remember that if you need those good vibes daily, just try to, you know, try to find people that are on the same mindset as you, but also maybe you could also bring out good vibes out of people because there's people that are maybe in a little bit of a bad mood, but maybe if you crack a little joke and then you get them laughing and then maybe they'll tell a joke and then you start talking about something else. So it's all about, you know, you want to get good vibes from people, but you also need to give vibe good, give good vibes to people. So it's about just trying to get this thing going around naturally. So that's why I go on Twitch. And I guess if I'm going to promote one thing, you can come say hi to me on Twitch and it's, uh, twitch.tv slash any game time and uh i like to stream video games on there every day and i just like to promote happiness good vibes like i'm mr good vibes daily on there and people just like to come on and 
see me play video games because a lot of people when they play video games they rage and they get mad and they yell and stuff and uh and i try to <laughs> be the opposite of that I, I try to get people to just enjoy games more and then just have fun with it and you know there's at times where you know it's natural to kind of get mad a little, about a little play like ah i can't believe i just died there but then you know you get back at it and it's still good vibes daily right, and you fight right. past it and so yeah that's my just the message of the day you know just keep on fighting keep on smiling and keep on laughing Excellent. Yeah, no, there's definitely people that take that extremely <laughs> too far. They, they go crazy. They smash up their oh, TVs, well, keyboards, and everything. Not that it's not entertaining, but, you know, it, it yeah, does go Yeah, well, too since far. you brought that up, <laughs> well, since we're talking about that subject, um, some of these people, they they get popular. Like, they do that, and then they're getting popular. So they're like, oh, I'm going to keep doing this because I got views off it. I got subs off this. So you also have to realize that we, as the people, we have to realize that we can't feed into that stuff. Because then we help that grow and we also help people think like they want that in this world, that people want that negativity, people want that rage. But we don't really want that. Like what happens is I notice I talk to people and why they watch those kind of videos is because they're bored in life and they laugh at it, but they're not laughing with them. They're laughing at them. So there's a difference. And, right. and that's the thing is like just try to feed into positivity feed into good vibes and and yeah if you're looking for something to do if you want to start a podcast maybe just try to you know go along a positive podcast because there's some people that you know try to get into negative stuff and they love getting into topics that'll get sound clicks and they, they love just talking about trump but they, maybe they didn't even like politics it's like you know talk to something that you're about passionate about like if you're passionate about politics then go into exactly. it but if you're passionate about happiness then maybe just try to talk to people of how they stay happy and make a happy routine that they do every day or a good vibes routine or certain things like that Right. Yeah. Don't be fake. Just be yourself. Because if you're not yourself, you're not happy. And the faker you are, people are going to call you out. And then you're going to be upset because you can't figure out why people are calling you out. And it's just a vicious cycle that I think people fall into. And you're better off just to be who you are. Because if you are, you have nothing to worry about. Exactly. In the long run. exactly. And on that note, I'm going to do a bong rip to end the stream. <laughs> Absolutely, Bubba. Rock it out. All right, guys, this has been the Goatman Show. I am Chris the Goat, and we have listened to Foolish Proxy. He is Canadian hip hop artist and podcaster about good vibes. Like I said, my friend, it's been great having you on. Hope you have yourself a great day, and we will Thank talk you. to you. Thank you. Good soon. vibes daily. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Have a good one. Thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you guys have a good day. Until next time, we'll see you later. That's all, folks. Thanks for listening to The Goatman Show with Chris DeGoat. Subscribe and leave a review if you'd be so inclined. Until next time. <laughs> Chris DeGoat, he has a podcast, yeah. Chris DeGoat, it's called The Goatman Show. He's a Capricorn hippie, banjo-loving hillbilly. He lives in Missouri. It's The Goatman Show.